Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna try to make some chain, and I'm gonna try to make a lot of chain. I made uh, some links last night, and I learned a pretty valuable lesson, uh, because these two are just stuck together, which kind of looks dumb, uh, but all the other ones are free, so I learned not to do that. And uh, it's gonna start by wrapping up. I'm gonna work with some 12 gauge fine silver wire, because it's relatively cheap and it's, it works pretty well. I think I like it for the design. Time starts now. I'm gonna wrap around this round bar. Whew. I see why people use drills for this. Four coils makes about an inch, so that's about five inches worth. So this is like 50 coils, maybe like 12 inches of chain. So I'm gonna need to buy some more 12 gauge. Whoops. Now that I got some coils, I could go ahead and cut them with some snips, but then I'm gonna have these little compressed areas that I'll have to file down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the saw. They do have these jigs that people set up to just cut all of them at the same time. But I don't own one of those because I don't I don't do this that frequently, so I'm not gonna go ahead and spend money on that. I mean I bet I could carve basically a channel in a piece of wood. I could just take like a an extra block, carve out a channel with a router, slip this in there, bolt it down from the bottom with kind of a hook, and then just go in on the top. That's for another day. I don't have another block. I could make one. I'll do that at some point. That's for the future. So, uh, you know, I'll save you the, the frustration of watching me cut these things up. You're gonna pretend like I showed you what I was doing. How about that? Just use your little imagination. Some parallel pliers. Let's see. Oh, what did I sign up for? Goodness. One. There's some rings. With this amount of work, basically took me 28 minutes. These rings actually look like they're gonna line up really well. I could probably start putting them together. Like just kinda slipping them over each other. No, to get like the chain going, you know? So, that's, that looks like something. That's like seven inches of chain right there. We're at 33 minutes. I'm gonna be squeezing these chains closed. Just slipping them past each other. Oh, well, that one's not a good example. Gonna do the last one because I still need to slip one over. That does look pretty good. Obviously, some of them have little gaps, and I'll have to deal with that when the soldering time. Basically, going link by link and using two pliers and squeezing them nice and tight together, pushing them together and rubbing them back and forth. And even though I'm doing this, I'm gonna have to double check it right before, each link right before I solder it anyway. All right, so I'm back. I bought some more silver. Uh, so uh, I didn't have to pull this myself because that's a lot of time and effort and I'm lazy. I'm gonna go make up some more links. We're still at about an hour in and I've got 15 inches of unsoldered chain. Boy, I hope that's enough. That's that's a lot of silver right there. It's like one and a half ounces. Something like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Now I'm gonna cut it up. It's gonna be like 25 inches.
perfect. That's about three ounces of silver right there. And all of them are gonna need to get soldered. I'll leave the last two open. I don't know what I'm doing, but I made a lot of links. How about that? I made a lot of links, and then we're going to do a thing, and the magic's going to happen. That's how it works. Okay, bye-bye. So I went ahead and I cleaned all the cutting oil off of the uh, chain here because that's not going to play nice with the solder. You know, kind of washed it with Dawn. Now I'm going to prepare to solder, and I'm just going to size up links against each other, I think. I don't think I'm going to use chip solder here. I think I'm going to use wire solder. I just bought some. I bought some 75% silver hard wire solder, and I think I'm going to try it out for the first time. see this being a pain in the ass. This is going to be a pain in the butt. Oh, I already got this one stuck to this one. How do we prevent this? It's some sort of magic baloney. I'm going to try to rip them apart. I honestly do not know how this works. This is so frustrating. I might just have to throw that pair out. Oh, that really stinks. I think I've already ruined a couple of links. So for this next one, I'm gonna make sure that the seam is far away from everyone else. So the solder doesn't have an opportunity to jump because it seems to be very apt. Alright. That one I think worked okay. I'm not gonna make you watch me get frustrated down a link of a hundred and something chains, so. So, I went ahead and totally fucked this up. I have links diffusing with links next to them and also not next to them. I tried cutting one, it didn't work. So that's good. I did this uh, previously on my prototype. I got two links soldered together and yeah, I, I don't know how people do this. It looks like I'm going to be throwing away a lot of silver, which I hate doing. I don't know if I have the patience for this right now. Okay, so I'm happy to say I have found a system that doesn't suck entirely. Basically what I do is I put the seam directly on top and I ensure that the out feed of the chain is going to the left. So I kind of have the in feed coming from the right. So I've got this uh, little hook here, in feed, out feed. I'm watching the out feeds seams to make sure that they're free floating. And I'm only really worried about the top ring fusing with the next ring or the, the actual ring. So first ring, the solder joint needs to be somewhere far and away. And then my top ring is straight up. So I flux right on top. I hit with the wire solder and then I outfeed it to the left. And I've just been doing this hot. I haven't been quenching every time and I haven't been pickling every time. But I did take the first seven rings. But after I cleaned them up, they were they looked pretty good. So now I just have, you know, 120 more to go. We're up to about uh, 5 inches of free-flowing soldered rings. Solid. And I'm just going to keep going on this. It's, again, not that exciting. I'll just do it and I'll show you afterwards. As I go down here, I've been cleaning them up after the soldering with, uh, just with this whirly brush.
seven inches of solder chain and I'm at like four or five hours now so that's good so I just finished up my last link and now I have to clean them up I think I'm about five hours in My soldering isn't so great. There's definitely some bulbs here that I'm going to have to file down. And I'm going to have to pickle it all. And I might have to redo a couple joints. Because some of them didn't didn't look like uh, they penetrated all the way through because I was running out of fuel. And my welds were a little cold. So a couple of these might break when I do the twisting. But the good news, good news here is that I think every single link is independent. I don't think I got a single joint that jumped between two links, so that's excellent. Clean, and then twist, so I'm just going to hop right in. I'm just going to go touch up uh, some of these joints that totally did not work. Gonna have to pickle every single one of these because it's just the way she goes. Come on. You see, there's a hole here, and this peg goes in this hole. I'm gonna lock my chain into the peg. I've got the chain just kind of. Wee! You're 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 just gonna get to see this much, but I I'm gonna take the chain and I'm gonna twist it you see the twist there so we're gonna we're just gonna twist it all the way from the end it's gonna get tight and then it's eventually gonna deform and I'm just gonna twist and twist and twist okay yep I can hear it oh Oh, my, I, I broke a link. All right, there we go. First failure right there, bam, nice. Oh, whoops. It's so funny. This, this joint looks like I didn't even do it. Remember, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. I'm wondering maybe I should do a little section at a time. How about that? I'll try a little section at a time. Okay, that's working. After a quick twist, it looks pretty good. I did bend this. Oops. I'm just gonna bend that back real quick. So I'm just gonna hammer along the way here to really tighten the rings together, give them a little flat texture, make sure everything's nice and even, because there's gonna be irregularities between sections of, of the links. I just contacted my design supervisor 
aka girlfriend, and she informed me that this was not big enough for, to put around somebody's head, which I had never even thought about. So now I have this chain, and if I close it, like this, it, it'll it be too small to put over your head, so now I have to figure out a clasping mechanism. And I think the one I'm going to go for is just the T-bar, and then you can slip it through, and it'll, yeah, so I'm going to have to go ahead and do that. Which I definitely don't know how to do. I got a ring, and I got some material, and I'll make a ring that's a T-bar. Somehow this is going to work. It's got to work. I'll make it extra big for now, and we'll cut it down. All right. Well, that did not go as planned. That's okay, because they're definitely adhered. They may have fused and soldered. Uh, that looks like the first part of our T-bar. And now i got to put the T on it. Put that bar on like that. The fact that it's way too big now is okay. Perfect. That's just so good. So now I got this thing. Somehow I need to make it smaller so that it fits through the ring. So now I'm going to be figuring out how to make this actually fit around that. So I got it to the point where this will slip in and out. I took down the, some of the sharpness on there, but it's pretty flat when you look at it. And if this doesn't work, I'll just cut it off. I'll just cut off this link. So hey, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put the ring, the big loop. There we go. I'll just put it back in. Yeah, something like that. Right? The clasp works pretty good. Now I've got this problem where the chain is only twisted to lay 180 degrees next to each other, right? It can twist this direction, but it can't twist this direction at all. They just lock up against each other. So what happens is there's no flexibility. So I think I'm gonna over twist the chain so that it has a little flexibility to twist in either direction. And I think that might help with binding and flexibility, so I'm gonna over twist it. I think this was a good idea because now it's much more relaxed when it's near the near the flat point, whereas before there was this kind of like little tension that would bring it to to kind of bind up against itself to do like a spin move, like a and that wasn't aesthetically pleasing, it was like it's like doing this twist near the center of the chain. So now this this feels a lot more relaxed. Flows pretty good. Let's see if I can clasp it. Yeah, that way? Nope. Um, this way? Yes, there we go.
Alright, so uh, this looks like what it's finished. Just have this quick disconnect. Works okay. I think I can do it. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. So this looks like. So this is a 23 inch chain, just how it turned out.